Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the daily crypto news and guys we're still giving away 500 xrp if we can get 2000 likes within 24 hours so make sure you press the like button make sure you subscribe and make sure you comment something down below as that is all that you need to do to enter this giveaway now guys, for the longest time, I've been telling you guys about this constant war and constant battle for what country is going to get their CBDC rolled out first. But also with all of that, I've been talking about all the different countries and I guess their internal stances from the banks on crypto services and just crypto in general. And here we got an article, not from the US, but finally something from Korea. Four of South Korea's largest banks to provide crypto services. Four of the top five South Korean banks have reportedly announced their plans to provide crypto services. The announcements came ahead of the crypto regulation that will soon go into effect in South Korea. Now, I'm actually really happy to see all of this, right? And the main reason for it is we've been asking for, you know, these countries to finally start up a little bit. And a little bit earlier, we saw the U.S. on the 22nd of July come out with a, another very positive statement. Another thing we saw recently was that in Germany, about 40 banks have reportedly applied for a license from the country's top financial regulator, the FFSA, Bafin, to provide crypto services as well. And basically, a lot of countries right now are trying their hardest to, to get themselves within this sector. And I think a lot of them are also planning at one point in the future to you know, lower their costs and to become more efficient, maybe working with Ripple along the way. Yeah, I'm thinking about that as well. However, it's just really, really positive and really cool to see that they're working on this and getting things done. SEC charges Boondatech in fraudulent ICO, orders disgorgement and fines. The SEC has filed charges against Boondatech for fraud during after its ICO, the ruling really required disgorgement of the $5 million raised plus payment of fines and interest, and the charges reflect a strong commitment from the SEC to continue dealing with the fraud committed by digital firms. And you know, normally I don't cover scams like this on the channel, but one thing I noticed really is the connection between Ripple once more, right? What I'm wondering here is if the SEC knew that XRP was a security or if they had any idea that they could put it that way, they most likely would have done it by now, right? We, we have a big lawsuit going on, of which another important date is going to be the 26th. But, you know, the lawsuit would easily be decided had the SEC come out with a statement like they've kind of done with Bitcoin and Ethereum. I'm really guessing and thinking here that the SEC does not know after so many years, what the frick are they doing? You know, what are they thinking about still that, that, that they can't come up with an official ruling for this? Is it because the country is not yet stable enough or, or what's pushing them or what's holding them back from coming out with a statement i mean if there's really quote unquote obvious scams like some people call xrp it would have been pointed out by the sec a long time ago all right the reason they're taking so long is maybe because they're trying to rule out any single possibility that it's in a security and maybe they're waiting out the lawsuit as well i don't know but it's really strange if you ask me your money and cv a financial protection guide well, in my opinion, the easiest way to protect your money, and by the way, the article is really strange. I'm noticing here's just a lot of links about everything. <laughs> um, as layoffs spread and businesses shut down, many Americans face sudden and severe financial challenges. While the pain is widespread, so too are the relief efforts. This Forbes guide aims to cut through the confusion and help you protect your finances in these uncertain times. Check back frequently, we'll update this page with the latest information and advice on everything from stimulus checks to tax, student loans, mortgage, and small business relief to the smartest ways to spend now, protect your retirement, and help others. Well, again, there's a whole list of things here that they've, I guess, quoted and linked to, a lot of Forbes articles, a lot of other ones. However, what I have to say for you guys is to protect your money from potential inflation, you got to go for something like gold or Bitcoin or possibly a different currency. All right. And I'm not saying, you know, put all your money in that. Never really going to say that. I'm just saying, think about what could happen and make sure you also think about what could be smart for if the U.S. were to fall down or the dollar were to collapse a little bit or maybe even the banking system were to collapse. 
You know, think about that. Warren Buffett has thought about it too. He's also preparing for it. He's buying into gold and some other things. We all know it. So why are you leaving yourself behind by not doing that? Keep it in mind, guys. I'm, I'm trying to teach you guys some of this stuff as well, you know, to really focus on your paper a little bit better, you know, focus on your worth and keep trying, keep trying to make sure that you're always in a good position. Why do Chinese companies list their shares in New York? Well, I think it was very obvious why they're doing that, but some of you guys said, oh, yeah, I don't know. Well, guys, there's a big war going on between the U.S. and China. Not a war with fighting. Well, it's just how you want to define or de yeah, define fighting, but it's more a war of money and trade. And basically, a lot of Chinese companies right now are listing in the U.S. because eventually it could be that Trump's going to cut off the connections with China, which will leave them all in the dark. So that's basically what this article is about here, explaining why they're trying to get here. And there's, you know, it's all talk about fees. It's all talk about bigger strategy. It's all talk about not being one to cut off and all of that. And that just made me think about something else as well. You know, the longer this kind of cold war between the U.S. and China goes on, the more hysteria you'll see surrounding it all, right? Because it will get worse and worse over time until one of them wins. And when does one of them win? Well, for us, for us crypto guys, I would say one of them has won once, you know, they, they I guess, get the CBDC rolled out or that uh, they get full control over Bitcoin. I think those two things could really rule them as winners. Another one maybe could be if they get a full or a really proper regulatory framework for crypto as well. I think that would be a pretty good one. But um, here's another one. Why the China-US rivalry is at a crucial turning point and what it means for business. As Chinese companies continue their rise in the global 500, the competition between the two economic superpowers is intensifying. Why well, I think this is also not coming as a you know surprise to a lot of people that um, you know it's it's only continuing on it's going to be going on and on and on and about your assets well really about your crypto is what I should be asking you or what I should be talking to you guys about I'm gonna say that this whole stuff is all positive for crypto all right I've checked out so many articles I've checked out so many different people's opinions and all I could find is that it's only just good stuff for your um, Crypto, you know, there's no real reasons why crypto would go down because of this war. Really none, except for maybe them battling on who's going to be powering Bitcoin. But for the rest, they're all positive movements. You know, they're working on the regulatory framework for crypto. They're working on the CBDC. All of it is good stuff for crypto. There's no bad parts about it. Another thing I noticed here, wait, first this one. Trump takes executive action after lawmakers feel to agree on stimulus fate of the next bill uncertain. As benefits expire, rents come due, the school year looms and states struggle, Washington's warring factions are racing to rescue the economy and their political fortunes. Well, yeah, guys, a lot of uncertainty is going on right now, and that can also be seen in the unemployment rate. Uh, unemployment rate really skyrocketed in April to about 15% or so, highest it has ever been. The biggest it's ever been was just after the recession, October 2009, uh, at about 10%, at least that's from modern history i don't know maybe it was more back longer ago but from this 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 um yeah decennium it's the highest point and it skyrocketed back down as well you know the, this rocket went up like crazy and it just boom, it fell back down like crazy as well because right now it is at about 10.2 percent what it made me think about though was also like hmm you know what's that been doing for crypto and a fun fact is that ever since this came around the first part in January, you could argue whether it made it go up or so. I don't really know exactly if that could be you know, justified, but it's something to think about here. However, if we take the last 90 days, so I guess, well, let's take a little bit further. From April on forward, April is about, the start of April is about here. Here we go, it's about the start of April. Bitcoin has already doubled within this time period. All right, the last four months here from the start of April up to now, Bitcoin has almost doubled in value, which makes me think, you know, maybe all this unemployment is actually a good thing because people are starting to look into crypto. They're looking at other options to invest in, looking for a modern future. They're looking for better finances. They're looking to strengthen their position and all of that. And that also contributes to how good Bitcoin does. Another one is once you become unemployment, you notice how uncertain times are, right? And the more people that get unemployed, the more people start to think about how uncertain their futures are. And maybe that's also what I want to go for something that has nothing to do with the U.S. You know, something to do with which will always do good. Bitcoin. And whenever I say Bitcoin, I mean all crypto, including XRP, as you guys know what I'm about. I always think 
you know, it's, it's it's just a small part of it is Bitcoin, and in the end, it's it's only the the start of it all, right? The big part is the same for RippleNet. How RippleNet sees ODL. How Brett Gonley has explained ODL working is first you okay the contract stuff will leave behind. Let's say first you get them onto RippleNet, then it's a lot easier to get them onto ODL once they're already connected with RippleNet. Same kind of goes for XRP. First, a lot of these guys will hop over into Bitcoin, and once they've gotten their gains from that, they'll move into altcoins. And that will boost XRP. Another cool article I just saw was from the Philippines. I went over it a little bit earlier in my video, but still, it was some cool stuff. Ripple optimistic for greater ODL and XRP adoption in the Philippines. The head of Ripple for Southeast Asia has expressed his optimism to a Philippine daily newspaper that the XRP-based ODL payment solution will further their adoption in the country. According to Ripple's Kevin Lee, Half of Ripple's customers are from the Asia-Pacific region, with the Philippines becoming one of the most important remittance destinations worldwide. And again, this partnership is going to be huge. A lot of the partnerships are going to be huge. It's a $10 trillion problem they're fixing, guys, and we are all part of that. Now, the MacBook is going to be heating up like a crazy guy again, so I'm going to cut it short here. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, you learned something new. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. Take care, everybody.